Hello pilots and welcome back to another X-Wing flight video brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. As always, my name is Phil and today we actually went online to have a game because we just haven't been able to get into the store but luckily our friends are really helpful and don't mind playing online. But joining me online to talk about this we have... James, I'm online and ready to go. <laughs> Absolutely, s wells are locked in attack position. So let's have a quick look at those lists. We are playing Salvage Mission today, and it is actually myself on the left-hand side running a Rebels list, which feels odd, I'm not going to lie, but I enjoyed it. So we have two B-Wings with Ten Num and Braylon. Ten has Marksmanship, Fire Control System, Proton Cannons, Plasma Torpedoes, and the s wells Braylon has marksmanship, fire control system, proton cannons, homing torpedoes, and the S foils. We have Garvin in the T65 with proton torpedoes, R3 astromech. Thank you for the tip, James. And the S foils. And rounding off the list, we have Saw Guerrero in the U Wing with elusive, Jin Erso, perceptive co pilot, contraband cybernetics, and the pivot wing configuration. Very stacked, but I like it. It's a cool list. We'll, uh, we'll dive into the details of it in a bit. But your opponent was Ben with a first order list. Yes. We got one Whisper and a bunch of standard FO fighters. We've got Recoil in the. It's actually a silencer, by the way. Silencer. I th you know, it's it's just the silencer. Whisper, that's, that's where I get mixed up. That's my bad. <laughs> that's fine. But it's Recoil with Predator and Sensor Scramblers. Commander Malarus with cluster missiles, Lieutenant Gaelic with Proud Tradition, Biohexacrypt codes and a tractor beam, Scorch with a shield upgrade, Static with Proud Tradition and Ion Cannon, and DT798, who I guess didn't get a name, with a shield upgrade. He actually does have a name in his it's like nickname line, is it? Why does not well I, I don't know, they do like doing name that name. with they do like doing that in First Order, so DT-798 is actually Jace Rucklin, but I suppose Jace Rucklin just doesn't sound really cool as a First Order pilot. So we'll let them on. Um, but yeah, so... Going into this, really you said it's um, Salvage, yes. and your four ships against six, so well, did you have any plans going into this? Um, not die too quickly. Um, I tend to recently. I tend to come up against much higher volumes of ships. Um, I think my kind of plan going into this was: there's a group of Tie Fighters over there. I'm going to try and shoot them down as quickly as possible, and if I can get to an objective and take it, cool. I mean, I've got some big hitting munitions on here, which should hopefully yeah, allow me to hit really hard in a big alpha strike. Yeah, you definitely got an alpha strike build. You got three ships with strong munitions, decent mods, support. Yes. You know, the U Wing, one of the better support ships. Yeah, I mean, Saw Guerrero, his ability is absolutely brilliant. When you when a ship is attacking at range zero to three that is damaged, it gets to re-roll one attack die, which is quite nice. And B wings tend to get damaged quite quickly. Um, obviously. Garvin as well, with the R3 Astromech being able to pick up two locks is brilliant. And then if he does spend his focus, he may choose a predator ship at range one to three, and that ship gains a focus token. That can be really handy if you can get that to work well. So and then Ted and Braylon are just stress monsters who yeah, go, I'm stressed. Oh, I'm gonna use that to spend or re-roll. I know what? that there are quite a few pilots now for the B-Wing, but the, the Stress Boys are just brilliant. They take a whole I... negative side of the game and just flip it on its head. And just go, Stress, yeah. brilliant. I'll have it. I still think Ted and Braylon are the two best B-Wings. I mean, yes, you get Hera at I-6, but to be honest, if you're going to fly Hera, you're probably going to fly her in the A-Wing. Um, yes. If you are going to chuck in a third B-Wing, Gina works really well with these two, being able to pass her stress to them if needed, 
which is a really nice mechanic if you've not looked into it. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love Ted and Brandon. I I think the beaming's fantastic, especially with the stabilized S foils um, on there when they're open. Being able to double tap when you've got a lock and a cannon, if you can line it up, is just. I used it against a resistance Chewbacca and. By the end of the turn, the resistance Chewbacca was not there anymore. I did not let that Wookiee win. Now, what I... are your thoughts on... Because they're the same points. Proton cannons versus heavy laser cannons. Because I... proton cannons recharge over time, right? Yeah, so you but have to spend two charges. And so you can't use it every other... You have to use it basically every other turn when you start using it. I... I actually prefer proton cannons to heavy laser, especially with the marksmanship upgrade as well, because you are actually putting crits in as well. That's true, the yeah, because if you're, if you're running the heavy laser cannon, marksmanship just doesn't help. Yeah, I mean, proton cannon automatically allows you to change one focus or hit to a crit. Then you add marksmanship, so you're almost guaranteeing two crits there with it. Um, which is just incredibly powerful. Yes, obviously, you can't use it every turn, which can be difficult, but especially in a mission like Salvage, where putting crits out is going to be really key, that actually is fantastic in my eyes. So I really like that. And Heavy Laser Cat is good, but... I like the new shiny cannon, really. It works yeah. well also, for me. You, you'd hope that if it is a cannon that takes up two cannon slots, that it would be better than oh, yeah. an upgrade that only takes up one slot. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, don't get me wrong, heavy laser cannon is cool, but again, you can't... It's not that crit machine, and sometimes if you can just keep triggering crits, it is just going to be really powerful. Um, See, Recoil has actually just claimed an objective at the top. We've actually used the energy marker on there so that we can easily see which ships actually have the objective. Yeah, it's That's interesting that Ben has opted for Recoil to grab one of these, because now he can't reposition, which I feel like is what Recoil wants to do. I think where Recoil is a bit further out of the fight, he thought, you know what? take this opportunity to grab the objective even if later on he does decide to jettison it to actually be able to do repositions later he's got at least a turn or two of just building points up True. so yeah. that is quite good i mean we, we did actually have to because i will admit we don't play salvage very often so we did actually have to quickly check how is it we knew the basics of how you lost it obviously if you suffered a crit or got destroyed we knew that you could jettison it, but we didn't know when. And it is at the oh, end yeah, of the ship's the, activation. Um, it's probably the scenario that changed the most when they updated the rules for it. And yeah. You learn one rules, and then they go, okay, actually, this is more balanced. Here are the new rules. And it's like, oh, yeah. okay, this is, this is different enough to basically relearn it. Yeah, and one of the things we weren't too sure on, Recoil obviously had a cloak token. We were like, right, we know that you can't cloak Oh, when yes. you have it, but what happens if you are cloaked? Do you decloak? And we found that you literally just remove the cloak token. That's yeah, it. Yeah, you just you just drop it. So that was actually we had a slight pause in the game while we were looking that up, and I was actually quite surprised by that. I didn't realise that it worked like that, but it makes sense. But yeah, if you can't forcibly jettison it mid-turn so you can't say oh, i'm going to do a barrel yeah. roll up to jetson you have to jetson it then you can barrel roll next turn so yeah it's, you can't it's it's get the benefit good. of holding on to it getting your reposition on that same turn yeah absolutely also um, i understand why they don't want people cloaking with these things because one of the main um, things they said they didn't like was point fortressing, and if you can just cloak, yeah, off gallivanting with a point every turn, then yeah, that's something they don't want. I mean, a tie silencer with a cloak on it is five evades at normal range. 
you start going range three through obstacles, potentially seven of eight dice set. In fact, I don't even, can you roll seven nowadays? Is that the maximum oh, number right. of dice you can roll? No, actually. There, 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 is, there, is a, there is a rule on that, and I think it's seven is the maximum dice you can ever roll. But I think there's only like two or three scenarios where you could actually trigger that. And I'm pretty sure one of them is pure sabac in like the most insane situation where you could get like a seven dice range one attack or something. Um, if anyone does actually remember that situation, drop it in the comments because I would love to see it and then see if I can actually do it because that would be hilarious. So I think we're possibly about to go into shooting now? Yes, looks like we are. That was... Um... Malaris and Gallic moving up. Um, we've got a good bit of shooting. Oh, range three shot there from Gallic. Nice lot of target lock sat there on Scorch as well. I think he's seems to be a bit of a target at the moment. Uh, but looks yeah, like yeah. Was that an intentional thing of like, oh, I really don't like this guy, or was he just? the one who ended up being close enough to everyone. I sort of looked at it and went, okay, I know that when Garvin moves, he's going to be able to get him as well. So I thought if I just double down on him and, and yeah. Garvin can get the two, he, he's also got static as well. I thought, right, if the B-Wings take out Scorch, Garvin can then move over to static. So, and if the target lock doesn't pan out, I'm pretty sure that Tendum would have bullseye on DT seven nine eight anyway. So, ooh, tractor oh, tractor to Braylon, yeah. Ooh, okay. Which is not great because again, he's got bullseye potentially, but I mean he's still got his plasma top. Just trying to figure out exactly how he moves yeah the tractors on the. It's got all these nice buttons to do stuff like this, but tractor beams don't come up that often, so... But they're also yeah, they're really, like... really small. So... Oh yeah, because you're trying to hover over it and it's disappearing. I, 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 was like, I was like zoomed right in holding M to magnify to be able to see it. Like, how do we do this one? I've never done a tractor beam on here, but we figured it out eventually. Oh, okay, he moved you over there. He did move me over there and then... Because obviously you can't move him on. You can't move me onto an obstacle. Yes. So that's where tractors become different. But I think he was trying to disrupt the bullseye, but also trigger a shot there for Malarus, who was out oh, of okay. range. So actually, barrel robbed me into yeah, range three gosh, with Malarus, which was brilliant. Agility. Yeah, I still get animate. Yay! Um, and that is a hit there. And that's a cheeky evade from a B-Wing. But also, I believe that might even put me just in statics range as well. Uh, static is yellow. Yellow. Maybe. It's very yeah. close. If not, it would definitely be... Definitely a nice shot there for him onto Garvin. And Ben does actually have initiative, so all of his ships will pummel me first, but I still get to shoot back, which is quite nice. I mean, he's done a good job of getting the focus fire Yeah, onto Brayden with that tractor beam. I mean, being able to turn that from three like, shots... If you're ever going to tractor beam, fine. I think that's the exact situation you want. Yeah. I mean, especially when you're getting two hits in there like that. That's guaranteed hit going through. Two shields down on Braylon there. Oh, so is Braylon stressed? No, he's not stressed. Um, ah. He wasn't able to actually stress himself. Like, I could have actually done the barrel myself to stress myself, but I w didn't... But yeah, then you would be in that position on your own. Yeah, just... so I... I Braylon actually moved up, and then Ten failed the barrel roll. Like to get the stress, and the, well, failed the barrel and then locked to get the stress. Right, yeah. So, and I mean, I, of the two, 
I do think 10 is better. Oh, he does get range 3 there with uh, Static. That is... That is lit. I think that's why, the most why ideal. Play? You played this game. Yeah, but... <laughs> I don't remember everything that happened oh, okay. in the game. Well, unfortunately for you, it's not the best shot. And it's really no. you get a die, which... Wow. Man, he's been... That B-Wing has been evading a lot there. It's yeah, actually it's quite scary. Like maybe you wanted to take that one bit of damage? So you yeah, because it would have triggered Saw Guerrero there, which would have been quite nice. But we do have... And I'm going to shoot now. Yeah, I shoot um, 10 fires first because he's got the plasma torpedo. Yes. So 10 fires first, fires the plasma torpedo at Scorch. Could have done the protons, but you know what? No, always fire a plasma first because it's if, if, you're yeah. guaranteed, well, not guaranteed, but you're always guaranteed to get rid of a shield. Yeah. And when Scorch actually has two shields, it's worth it. Absolutely. Oh, only. The one though. Now the debate: spend it or do fire control. I think should, I think I should spend it. Oh no, I did fire control. Looking back, maybe a mistake. Oh, oh, that's not good. Because then you can't spend the stress as well, so you're staying stressed. Yeah. Although, can you still at this? You can still at this point spend the tire lock on the other die, can't you? No, because he's done fight because he's called fire control system. I don't think that you can say, oh, I'm going to fire control one, and then, oh, no, I'll actually oh, spend yes, it. Yeah. Yeah, you cannot spend your lock during the attack. Fair enough. And then, disappointingly, he evades it. it Which ben means did actually go to yet. use. Yeah, Ben did actually go to use the focus. And I was like, you don't need to. You've already dodged it. Yeah, you've already dodged it. You can keep hold of that. So it means it also does not actually strip that shield. So it's a bit of an ineffectual plasma torp, really. But like, there's more munitions coming his way. Absolutely. And guys, if you're going to try and use plasma torps, that's not how you do it. Honestly, do better. But yeah, plenty of munitions. I've got homing torpedoes, proton torpedoes. I mean, it's just a shame I couldn't put some torpedoes on Saw as well. It's pretty feeling left out there. Also, Saw is just not in range. True. It's so difficult with medium-based ships, though. Like, to fly them in formation with them, you've got to start out of formation and get into a formation with them. Yeah, I'm I'm still not really used to flying them. I've been flying a little bit of uh, some scum ships with medium bases, yeah. and they are different. True. You, know, you don't get the same, like, oh, okay, it's like... A large base is effectively two small bases. Okay, I can work out the range from that because it's half. And it's like, oh, that's, okay. It just makes it so difficult. There was a homing torpedo there from Braylon, and Ben elected to just take the straight up damage I mean, rather than what you potentially do, you? take four. Yeah. But it's proton torpedo time this for Garbin. And this is presumably also going into Scorch. Going into Scorch, it's like, well, if I can. Oh, that's good. Three hits. Spending the target lock, absolutely. Into the crit. And, and turning one. Another crit. I mean, there oh, we go. Reach up for the, the plasma. Yeah. Oof. But still getting the evade and the focus of two evades. So it is. Crit, crit going in, so shield down and a crit on Scorch, and the crit is hull breach. Okay. I mean, you know, it's a low hull ship, but getting on on the first card is yeah. is always good to see. I mean, it does mean that everything is crits now, so there's more chance of basically one hit is going to work yeah, out. And, and, and two health, you kind of just go... I mean, I'll fix it if I have no other actions I really want to take, but for the most part, yeah. I'll just leave it and just go, I'm, I'm just attacking at this point. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, looking at the end of turn two there, obviously Ben has scored three points for the objectives. And health-wise, I think I would have liked to have taken a bit more damage. I, I would have preferred to have taken Scorch out by now, but 
I mean, a B Wing has taken four shields from five shots. I will take that any day of the week. I think that's actually pretty pretty fair return there. Yeah, keeping it range definitely helps you, but that tractor beam definitely was, helps then get that yeah. damage through. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, it took it from three ships to five ships shooting at him, and I know that he would have absolutely loved to have taken Braylon out there because, again, Braylon is five points, so that is a huge swing as well, and he he can hit like a tank. Now, I'm not particularly familiar with all the FO pilots. I'm just having a look through their abilities now. Are there any that sort of stood out to you as like that that needs to go? When they started triggering, because I didn't, I didn't get a chance to see the list before playing, um, and when I fly FO, I don't tend to fly the FOs very much. I tend to fly the SFs more. So I was having a look at some of their abilities, and one of the ones that actually does stand out for me, and I'm just going to bring it up, is um, Malaris. So at the start of the engagement phase, you may spend one charge and gain one stress token. If you do until the end of the round, while you defend or perform an attack, you may change all of your focus results to evades or hits. That's kind of scary. I mean, it's kind of Braden's ability. Yeah. So you, it, I guess it, you're keeping it. Yeah, except instead of you don't re-roll, you just change oh sorry i mean tens ability with the spending yeah the yeah so, so you keep the stress so yeah it, it's it's very much like tens ability and that i think is actually quite powerful because it's when you perform an attack so it's not even when you perform a primary attack so that would work on cluster missiles <laughs> which is his upgrade yeah yeah um and all of them just have really interesting abilities um statics is one of my favourite abilities on a ship, but it's one of the harder ones to trigger. While you perform a primary attack, you may spend your lock on the defender and a focus to change all of your results to crit results. I mean, that's... Yeah, if you can pull it off, fantastic. Yeah. You need a double modded shot. Yeah. I He's mean, he, he, attack dice, so you really want that to be range one to, to yeah. really get the benefit, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's an ability that Static's had since version 1 as well, and I remember seeing it originally going, that's really fun. Not going to be easy to trigger that, though. Um, also, it's It could potentially just never happen, because you get the range 1 shot and roll all blanks, and then you go, well, now I have to spend the target lock anyway, and yeah. now I can't use my ability. Yeah, true. But all of these pilots are very offensive. I mean, Scorch and D2798, they're... I mean, Scorch, if you're not stressed, gain a stress and roll an additional attack die. D2798, primary attack, if you're not strained, gain one to roll an additional die. Like, it's so very... Three attack ships. Yeah. They're very offense orientated. And... Gaelic as well is actually a really good one that combos well with someone like Static um, because he can like after another pretty ship range or two is destroyed you may perform a coordinate action even while stressed and, and when there's this many ships on the board there's a good chance there'll be someone to coordinate yeah and you can get that, uh, that target lock early for say Static which is just good Nice little barrel roll there from Brennan just to get his stress active. And also might just get out of Scorch's arc there, which will be key. Definitely, Maybe. I'm pretty sure, out of DT798. But that's, um, that's a really nice range one shot for both of them there, to be honest. Yeah, someone is taking some damage there. And there's the K-turn from... Garmin. Yeah, I will say I thought it was going to go a little bit further back. I mean, you cleared it. Yeah, you very nearly bumped into Braylon. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see that, and was quite fortunate that that didn't happen. It's only the case um, of like you go, okay, I, I know this ship wants to do this, and I know this ship wants to do that, and then sometimes you forget that they can then get in each other's ways. I've definitely done it. 
Yeah, and especially that you've got right in the middle there so many ships. I mean, there's seven yeah, ships. Yeah, none of them have hit each other is some kind of miracle so far. Oh, it it's very impressive that there hasn't been a bump there. It's just, it is actually pretty insane. And I'm just trying to check Malaris's arc as well. I'm wondering if he's actually managed to avoid if Braylon is out there as well. Uh, really hard to tell. Well, fortunately, TTS is quite accurate with that, so we'll... Uh, yes. Help. It is impressively accurate with that. I do... That's one of the advantages on TTS, that I do feel things flow quicker, but I do still absolutely love seeing the ships on the board. Oh, yeah, definitely. I like actually like getting the ships out and be like, right, this is a B-Wing, and this is like the Millennium Falcon, and just... Being able to get down on the eye line of it as well to really try and line things up. Oh, there's the one oh, we were waiting for. Well, it was bound to happen. Gallic, was... Gaelic bumping okay. and damaging himself. Ooh. Now that's a result I'm happy with. Now it's more like a real TIE fighter. It's been downgraded. It is something when you're flying against FO that you obviously see a TIE fighter and then you're like, oh, I've got a crit on you. And he's like, yeah, I have a shield. And you're like, oh. And you go, oh, I'll take yeah. off. And then go, oh, I've still got a shield. <laughs> yeah. And you, you kind of sometimes forget that the FOs... Cause I, I don't actually see... F, I, I fly S, like I said, I fly SFs more. I think they are quite see underrated because you get a decent amount of health for the points that you spend on them. Yeah, I mean, all of these FOs are three points, and basically they're four health, and they've got good actions, they've got a solid dial, and yeah, and all of these pilots have got really fun abilities as well. So, it's just, yeah, it is really good. They are fun. And I've seen them at the at Beachhead, there was a couple of FO lists that did look really good fun that they didn't make it onto the stream, unfortunately, but I, I did have a bit of a check out and see oh, what you've like. Oh, that's a really good shot. That is mean. Yeah, that is very so, mean. Who, who was shooting there? I didn't quite. Oh, that was the tractor beam. Gaelic was tractor beam. Oh, that could have been worse. So, Gaelic tractor beaming. Yeah, sometimes you're like, well. Right. I've, I've already yeah. played Tractor Beam, it's a shame it's not an actual shot, but... I mean, to be honest, I think he'd prefer Tractor Beam just to do this, to which put is... back to where you were and give everyone a shot on him again. Yeah, now everyone has a shot. And it's he like... Might... Brendan might still have Bullseye on recoil there. It's so close. But he is going to have to live, because now Malaris can fire. If Malaris, Malaris would have to absolutely Oko right now, like four hits, and it would have to be, it would oh, have to be crit yeah, doing it. You'd need a decent crit. Could happen. Oh, absolutely could happen. I mean, it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility there. But luckily, again, where I fought is it's still going to get a chance to shoot later so uh, oh it looks like Malaris is actually going for 10 10 dub instead okay oh he's doing the cluster missiles onto 10 dub so he's hoping to hit and then go straight into so yeah so Guerrero so that actually makes sense he's trying to make the most of those clusters and he has triggered his ability as well. I so, mean, I also, you could still cluster missile Raiden and then use the clusters to shoot um, Garvin, can you? Not Garvin, it still has to be an arc. Ah, okay. Has to be an arc. The only, the only limitation that is removed is the target lock limitation on the second one, so it still has to be an arc. Still has to be within range. Um... 
I don't, I don't tend to use cluster missiles very often, even though no, it's actually really nice for... Cheap, but it's always yeah. a case of, uh, I feel like the missiles are a little underpowered. Yeah, so after this attack, you may perform this attack as a bonus attack against a different target at range 0 to 1 of the defender, ignoring the target lock requirement. But not ignoring the arc requirement. Yeah, okay. not ignoring the arc requirement. Ooh. Also, yeah, that's a big hit there. And, and he healthy. Yep, yeah, only two health, only two shields on ten. So, you know what? That is the best result when you get a full spread of hits there. And now, cluster missiles into saw, right? Uh, should be into saw. No, that's actually gone into Braylon. Braylon, interesting. I, um, I'm not sure if Braylon's actually within range one. Yeah. Of... Sometimes you forget to check that. But... Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, I don't know if Braylon was in range one of ten there, but um, so that is actually console fire on Braylon. So that's kind I mean, of all the shots going at Braylon this turn. I think he's going down no matter what. Yeah. Especially it, it's... To beam. Yeah, it's not. It's not looking good. I do really but... like the setup of I've got a bunch of ships. I'm going to focus fire, and whoever we're focusing on is getting tracted. Yeah, and that's hit, hit, crit, going into Braylon there from Recoil. Doing the... Dress. Am I re-rolling that? There yeah. we go, re-rolling it. Hey. Getting the obeyed, so hit, crit there. Could still kill. Please don't... But, I mean, to be honest, if he dies, it doesn't really matter. He still gets to shoot because recoil is the I-4 step. And the final one is... I can't read that blow right. Structural damage. Oh, he's a, it doesn't matter. He's not going to evade the moment anyway. Yeah. I mean, the great thing about, obviously, still having one health is that any of these ships that do have another target, one of them now has to shoot at Braylon, so that's a shot. Not necessarily wasted, but a shot that Ben could potentially have would have liked to have used somewhere else. I mean, most of them obviously only do have Braylon anyway. I don't think DT catches 10. And Scorch definitely can't see anyone else, but potentially Static. If Braylon's still there, Static yeah. might want to go somewhere else. That does come down to the... Uh, I've got a lot of ships who's actually shooting next sort of thing. Yeah, always being, always having in mind your order of attack. So if you've got three ships and one of them can only see one target and the others can see other ones as well, use that one that only has that one target first, then move on to the others. Because yeah, even if it only strips yeah, token... Both away from the most limited options to the most options. 100%. I mean, there, even now, there are still times where I occasionally do it, I use the wrong ship and I go, ah, oh, didn't have shot with that one first. Yeah, because yeah. now... You get so excited, oh, I can get a kill, I can get a kill, and then you go, oh, wait, no, someone else should have at least tried first. Yeah, it's like I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking, right, Braylon could... Braylon is now dead, but Braylon could go straight into static now. But I'm thinking, don't do that, because Garvin only has static. Yeah, because if somehow Garvin does take out static, Braylon can shoot recoil. Exactly. And then, in the other side of things, I'm looking at the lower part of the board and thinking, right, Saw Guerrera and Ten both have really nice shots on DT798, but I think I would do Saw first, because he's could still pick range one off on DT-798. Yeah, I, I also think the with the amount of trouble Gaelic has already given you with that track beam, I think possibly try and take him out, yeah. Him. Yeah. But it looks like no damage. Uh so I was kind of you too much on uh, the lower part of the board there, I kinda of missed that shot. Yeah. Look at it. So that was recoil. 
Oh no, recoil wouldn't have had a shot. So we are going Garvin first, I believe. Lost yeah. track. That's all right. Uh, Garvin with the target lock because he was able to get two. God. I mean, again, thank you. I did, I did he had R4 and like marksmanship, and you said put target lock on, and yeah. Haven't been able to really trigger the focus yet, but. I mean, the only thing turn is in the same target lock, you've then done a Kate turn. That's still pretty That's good. That's pretty good. That's actually really good. So that's a hit crit on static. So that's shields down and the crit. And I think at this point, you'd probably get Braden to follow up into it, really. Yeah. So that's a disabled power regulator. Does um, Braden just... also have a target lock? Hmm. Uh, yes, Braden does have a target lock. Well, that's, yeah, that cements it, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's the um, objective oh, jettisoned. Great. Also, Scorch did repair that hull breach, by the way. Oh, he did? Okay. Good for him. Yeah, good for Scorch. Good old bit of a uh, duct tape there, I reckon, probably did the job. Yeah, this, this seems to be the, the current tactic for salvage, is put it behind the ship that's dropping it. Because it's yeah. the most difficult position for that same ship to turn around and pick it up again. Absolutely. It makes perfect sense to me. I mean, there's not many ships that would be able to pick that up straight yeah, away. Yeah, Nico could, but he's already holding one. He's already got one. I think the only ship on the board that could probably pick that up from this position, if it was done to them, would be Saw Guerrero, because he would just do contraband, stop, pick up, laugh at you. Contraband is fantastic on a ship that can stop in this scenario. Yeah. Oh, Braylon, four dice, rerolling. He's Three dying. Heads the crit he's from Braylon. He's going with him. He is just pulling on those triggers and taking static with him I mean it's not the same amount of points but it's still it's a ship down which means less shots coming in which is the most important thing and you've forced the salvage to be dropped which is yes. pretty good so I mean in theory that's a potential four point swing for me because if static if static was set up, that would have been an additional point and I would have been three points further behind. So it does work out pretty well. Uh, so just having a look at it. Just checking what I've got with both pilots there. Yeah, because 10 does have the option for the yeah. uh, the cannons as well. Ooh. Oh, go for Scorch. Maybe see if I can get him off the board. Okay. Well, I, yeah, actually, looking at it, 10 has the, the lock as well. Yeah, 10 has the lock. He's injured. Uh, the Jin so perceptive co-pilot combo, so, which is so good. If you are flying Rebels, and you have enough points and two crew slots, and there's no other like combo with the pilot ability that you want to capitalize on, take those. Yeah. And that is and out. One action is just efficient it is so efficient and yes that is scorched down so that was the right choice there at that time scorched down does trigger gaelic so gaelic is going to be able to do his coordinate i wonder what ben's going to do with that it is an interesting no one, one. On ben's side can shoot so there's no point Giving out well, I guess some defensive tokens, but then you gotta choose the right person to try and defend. Yeah, it's like if you defend one, do I just say, okay, thank you, I'll go elsewhere? Also, he can't coordinate himself, so. True. If you are then gonna target Gaelic, then none of this decision making matters. Yeah. I mean, obviously, DT's still. DT's got a focus. His manner is going to be strain as well, isn't he? He does. He took a strain for um, his, ability, his ability, so he could shoot that extra die. So, getting a target lock with DT seven nine eight. Okay. Now, 
it's as to whether I get really gung ho and go, I've got proton cannon shot and marksmanship and focus. Do I just go straight to Malaris or do range one shot into D2798 with marksmanship as well? So it's almost like doing the I same think thing. Given the strain token and the range one, you go for DT, I said. I, hmm. Yeah. Gaelic is annoying though. Um, but, I'm debate. I'm debating it. Gaelic is also damaged. Actually, is Gaelic so, at range one? Uh, Gaelic is at range one, but not so in ball. Like, uh, missing out on his marksmanship. Yeah. It is. It is such a difficult yeah. choice. Um, and as you can see, I'm still t deliberating yet. Uh, yeah, I think because there's no tokens on Gaelic, I think him but we'll see i guess what you yeah. chose i'm just double checking yeah that's, that's the whole point, isn't it? it's like really work out who is best to shoot because my first thought was oh he's close so shoot him but yeah we go yeah, for which one yeah gaelic which is range one no marksmanship but no tokens on gaelic only two hits though which is not the best a bit disappointing and obviously 10 number is not damaged so can't re-roll because of saw and there are the two of eight, so unfortunate for you, but unfortunate. But you know, I act... each ship was had a really good option. Obviously, DT was bullseye range one with a strain, but has a focus. Gaelic had nothing, was at range one. Malarus was at range two, proton, marksmanship. It's a really tough choice. Yeah. In the end, I went with Gaelic's annoying. He has no shields. Potential. Fair enough. But end of turn three, six points for me, ten points for Ben. Those objectives yeah, you, really you know, right, sort of points wise on the ship's damage. Yeah. But, um those salvage points are sneaking Ben into the lead. Yeah. I mean those those ships being three points apiece is Beneficial for Ben is obviously if I take one out, it's not a huge amount, but also it's yeah, it makes it a bit hard for me to catch up. But whilst we're waiting for them to actually wrap on with moving, just want to remind you guys if you do like what we're doing here at Aftermark Gaming, you can support us on Patreon. The link is in the description below. And as we've said many a time, if you do join us at the veteran tier, you actually get to tell us what to fly. And it can be a list that you're interested in, that I haven't seen in a while, or it could just be something utterly mental that we fly and never want to see again in our lives. But if you want to do that, the link is in the description below. There's the old Ewing stop and turn. The moment I realised that that was a possibility, because I was like, oh, I don't know where I'm going to put Saw, he's going to pretty much bump no matter what I was like hold on I've got contraband I can spin Jin as a perceptor co-pilot I'm doing it was I had... hold on I'm gonna hold on and stay put or was yeah I, I literally was just like you know what ships are gonna end up in front of me and I didn't want to I didn't want to get in front of them and force them to bump into me, I would I prefer to have a better shot myself. So which is hence the fact that I pivoted there. Cause I also knew that I couldn't really go very far with um Tendum because he was actually ionized as well, which is the shot we missed earlier. So but then I had oh, no idea what to do with Garvin. Right, yeah. Like, I, because that K-turn didn't quite go as far as I anticipated, it left me sort of in a bit of a tricky spot with Garvin. Ooh, Saw's quite happy with that, though. Yeah, that is beautiful. Also, you're not doing a blue manoeuvre to get rid of the strain as well. Yeah, going on that aggressive leak round, get the shot. Again, not anticipating the contraband 90-degree turn there from Saw. Yeah, and, and DT cannot trigger his ability whilst he's already strained so this yes, turn that's true get a pilot oh and Gaelic just moves straight in front of Tendum there I feel like that ion move kind of helped you yeah it really did 
Plus, B-Wings like to go slow anyway. And there's another bump, this time Malaris bumping into Gaelic. I mean, I'm not going to lie, I'm really happy with how this is going so far. I mean, it's a lot easier to bump when you've only got three ships on the board. Yeah. Or at least self-bump. Is yeah. not always a good way of telling where the opponent's going to be. And especially when it's so such close proximity to each other as well, when you do start bunching up in the middle, I find especially when you're doing um, chance engagement where it all happens in the middle, that is where you just get oh yeah, that, that can so be many bumps. But it, it makes it fun. I like, I do, I think obviously chance engagement is the most like the old school just dogfight, but having that objective in the middle means you go into the middle. Yeah, there's no more sort of flying around the board for a few turns with almost nothing happening until someone decides, all right, I'll turn in. Yeah. I, I do like the uh, that change. Again, I'd be interested to see what other scenarios might crop up yeah. in future, but... All right, so what we got? This is... Uh, Gaelic into... Well, it's got to be... Garvin. Garvin right? Well, obviously, it's got to be Garvin, so... Um, debate whether to spend his focus that he got. I mean, I think you spend, the, you spend the focus. I mean, if you can track uh, Garvin like that. Now, presumably you... Oh, oh. maybe it wasn't. No, it wasn't a tractor. It was just a regular shot. I mean, if he'd have tracked me, I'm not going to lie, I would have happily done the 90 degree turn and got a nice angle there. Also, Garvin's not particularly looking to have to spend his focus to pass over to Brayden, because he's already got yeah. one. Oh, there's another Brayden shield. Ten. I mean, even if Ten takes it and then there has it in the so similar. I always get Brayden and Ten mixed up. Oh, I do as well. Absolutely. I mean, if you'd have heard the audio track for this, it would have just been like, oh yeah, Ten stood... Oh, no, no, no. Oh, Brayden. Oh, no, no, Brayden's dead. Got one of them. Oh, of course. Oh, uh, oh. Sorry, that lagged for me a little bit. I thought yeah. that another hit. No, no, it, 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 it got stuck on there. So, yeah, passing that focus over to Tendum, because you know what? Let's give him two anyway. So that is three hits going into recoil. That is pretty solid. Does he spend... I mean, with the, the S-foils, Ten can shoot twice, right? Uh, yes, if he if he uses the cannon and then he spends the his target three, lock two to three as well, so I don't think yeah I will show up for it. That's a shame. That's where the, that's where that's where like the having like say tractor beam or ion cannon can be preferable. Uh, but yeah, this if, if you focus on getting the double tap, yeah. Range one into D two seven nine eight. Absolutely spending the focus because nothing's going to shoot you. Two damage going through. So that's both shields down. Does get rid of his strain actually? So now he yes would use his ability. It's one of those ones. You know what? Take the shot when you've got the shot. Um, I guess so. Ten is going to go into Gaelic, range one, with two focuses, and marksmanship is live. Can we see Gaelic go down? Oh, that's going to be a hit, and two crits. Oh, And that is Gaelic biting the dust there. Wow. When those B-Wings hit, they really do they hit. They have a lot of defence, but they make up for it on their attacks. Absolutely. But, um, Gaelic is really put in work. For a three-cost ship, he is, with that tractor beam, been a real pain. Yeah, I think Gaelic has, so far, I would say, been the MVP for the First Order there. Yes. I mean, tractor beaming, 
Braylon into shots from all five ships and stripping that one precious evade he had was just insane. And in that first round of shooting, it was just, I was impressed that Braylon had only lost his shields, to be honest. Like, I would have been very, I wouldn't have been surprised if he was gone. Um, so Ben obviously didn't take the strain away, but I reminded him, I've shot you, strain goes, you can yeah. regain it. Ability, cool. Again. So, and, and again, Gaelic has done his work because he's given DT this target lock for this attack, which I feel like is going to yeah. do some damage. There's big potential. I mean, there's two there. Spen... Oh. oh, I think he might have forgotten about the target lock. Oh, no. Oh, that is unfortunate. I mean, when it's on TTS and you're not used to like those particular tokens. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's still got one through and recoil now. Oh, range! He's got a range one on Garvin there, or he could just try and hammer into Ten Num. I think he'd probably take the range one, really. Yeah, I think it is range one on Garvin. He's no, there's no shields. Ten is over there with mods and range bonuses, and recoil can use Predator outside of the bullseye which is his ability oh, yes he's that guy isn't he he is that guy so predator for the hit focus for the other three hits of the crit that is out gets an evade bad for garvin oh that... that's that's hit hit crit so garvin at the moment is okay not anymore he's not oh i don't it direct hit oh. ouch that is huge absolutely huge there i mean ow that is not what i was not what anyone wants to see really well it's not what you want to see well not what i want to see well, i mean ben was, ben was properly happy about that i mean i would but i mean it's it's it was such a good shot from Recon, and Predator outside of Bullseye is just insane. It was so powerful, and then, I mean, of all the ones to get the direct hit at the end, I mean, I would have taken any other one than direct hit. Purely yeah. Cold Breach, it would have been much nicer, but yeah, that, that was the absolute ideal for Ben there. Um, it makes it much more an uphill battle, because that puts Ben onto 17 points to my 9. And yeah, if you not don't taking any objectives, objectives when with the salvage points, yeah, I I need to get rid of I need to stop these salvage points ticking up and then not lose a ship. He also managed um, to get rid of Garvin before he fired off his second proton, which is when you take proton, big. you really want to be choosing both. Yeah, but I mean, we've just had a K turn from Ted, so he's got his stress so did clear well he did a blue so it cleared his stress but he bumped so he's going to do the perceptive co-pilot Jinnah so trigger yeah it's interesting you can still do that on a bump well, I in, had bump. I actually me and Ben actually had to debate that one I was like can, yeah can no we it's do a it? fair we... of like well is it you just get the token or is it an action but it is a focus action a perceptive yeah. to do it and then you can gain a focus it. token we're not taking a evade instead of that action. Yeah. So it does work. It's, it's really nice that that does work. And then obviously it does mean that any other ship that can have perceptive co-pilot, when it bumps, can trigger double focus. So, I mean, I'm kind of looking at K-Wings or another place that I really like having perceptive co-pilot. I mean, it's slightly different now, but I mean, back in the day, perceptive co-pilot and barrage rockets on a K-Wing was really fun. I don't think of any other abilities that really work when you've bumped. Um, any other than like specific pilot abilities? Yeah, I mean, composure when you bump into your own ship, your own ship. Well, no, because that's when you fail in action, and you, you oh, don't get it. Oh, 
Oh, so that'd be if you failed a barrel roll or something. Then. Yeah. Right. Okay. I don't tend to take composure. It's, it's one of those that every time I go to write a list, it's at the top, but I... When they um, errated it to how it works now, because you used to be able to do like some shenanigans with um, resistance, snap, where you go, oh, I'll boost. Oh, I failed my free boost. I'll take a focus, and then I'll take a lock. Oh, what's that? Uh, cheeky shenanigans with the resistance? Yeah, you can, because it used to be that you can... It was just you fail an action, you you get a focus, and now it's you fail an action, you take a focus, and you can't take any other actions. Yeah, which is, which I think is the right at thing. One point. Yeah. Oh, so this is interesting. Obviously, DT and Recall are now out of position, so can't shoot. But I have a nice lined up shot potentially on dt 798 and definitely a nice lined up shot on Malaris there with um, Saw. Could go for recoil, but I think Malaris is definitely the better option because it's not obstructed. I mean, you, you need to take someone out this turn to yeah. stay in the game. Well, and even then, if you don't, you've still got to try and catch recoil because he's got that yeah. objective. Yeah, if, if I can take out I mean, Malaris has the objective, so if I can take out Malaris, that limits potentially to only one point. But yeah, you're right. I need, ideally, I need to take everyone out or actually start taking objectives. Because you haven't taken any of the objectives all game so far. No. That might be. Might have been an error. Yeah. Is that a Ooh, roll? So or is that just dropping it. No, that that's Go a roll. It. Sometimes it's difficult to tell. Yeah. Uh, so that is two hits on to... Ten. Ten numb. Saving that stress for the shot. Three, isn't it? What range is of is it? Yeah, nought to three. So now three. I can get to reroll. I can, yes, I get a reroll, which is good. And I have bullseye. Oh, so... Proton cannon shot now. Oh, 100%. I finally get aim. Pardon? Is this the first proton cannon shot we've had? Yes, unfortunately. I mean, it's a bullseye shot. It's tricky. It, to... it, it is trickier to trigger. You can't take it. Uh, I mean, I just, I just spend just... and then go crit, crit. So hit, hit, crit, crit. That's an absolutely beautiful shot. I mean, two good of eight. Of aid token. Yeah, so triple of eight. So just the crit going through. So DT will survive this round. Sure, DT uh, has done well to stay alive. He has. He's had some big shots come into it. That's a hole breach there as well. It now comes down this round to saw what he can do. He has a range one on to Malaris with a focus. Uh, yeah, and that's, I guess, all he has. I've just realised Saw hasn't actually been shot at at all, so he hasn't had to use Elusive or his Evade. No, I mean, when you look at your list here, it's like, well, the others have munitions. They are the bigger offensive threat. Yeah. Two hits. Add Evade. Oh, but he'd spent his charge, oh, so man. it ends up being natural evades there. Oh, savagery. So I and get need to do some work. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I need to put crits on both recoil and Malaris. Need to get recoil to drop that point and also yeah. stop Ben picking up another one. Shouldn't be too difficult because DT is the only one that doesn't have one and he can't get to one. But yeah, I mean, I. And Malaris is double stressed, so he can't pick one up either. He's already got one. Oh, does he? I can't see the token. Uh, it's just behind. There we go. It just okay. sort of jump up there when I bumped in. Both of them then. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, another. Um, Blue Maneuver, clearing the stress, bumping, getting the stress, taking the Jin Perceptive. 
I actually, this is a combo that Madbots runs a lot in store, and that's where I got the got the idea for it from. I know, I know it's actually, it's the the Jin Perceptive. He's the one that sort of I first saw using it. That made me go, actually, I like that because he yeah. he tends to play Rebels most within the store. So when I saw him do that, I was like. I must remember that if I ever get back around to play Rebels. And I'm not going to lie, I've enjoyed this list. I've enjoyed playing Rebels again. I might actually have to get them out on the board properly. I don't think what other ships can actually do that combo. Uh, so they'd have to have, obviously, two yeah, cruise slots. So. Um, Ghost? Ghost. Falcon. Falcon. Ewing. I think that's Possibly, yeah. Yeah, because the 2400, although it's not standard, can only have one crew. Yeah. Oh, does 10? Yeah, 10's definitely got a nice shot there. Probably range 2. Oh, recoil. Good move. Doing the Talon. I mean, guaranteeing the win here, nothing can shoot recoil. So Ben has got the win here. It's just as to whether what kind of points he wins with now. Oh, has he snuck out of... I don't think he's at a 10's arc that... Uh, Saw's arc there. I think he saw might just catch him. Just. And he can't move out of the way either. So, I have the initiative, so I'm going to shoot. And yes, he does literally sneak that very back right hand corner of the base you need a very good shot here yeah because Malaris is very healthy so all hit please I mean that's there we go pretty good you just need blank out please Wrinkle focuses just no evades oh there's an evade oh he got an evade very nearly one away there on Malaris. Yeah, so, I mean, we knew that Ben was going to win it, so it's going to be a 21-point minimum for him there. It's just as to whether I can finish off DT and get a few more points to my name. Ben has done a very good job of uh, playing the objective. Yes. I mean, having the numbers definitely helps in this particular scenario, definitely. But at the same yeah. time, you know, in this last turn, he's protected recoil to guarantee it. Yeah. Oh, so re-rolling for Saw, getting the crit, spending the stress. Hit, hit, crit. DT-708 also has a whole breach, so they're all crits anyway. DT-798 goes down. Hey! Consolation prize! And then Ben took the whole deck with him. But it got confusing, and we just oh, didn't right. Yeah. Yeah, that's again. That's another yeah, thing that can be frustrating. On TTS. Pick up the card on TTS rather than hold it for like half a second. Yeah. And then when you go to try and put it back, it's almost impossible because then you can't hold it long enough to put it back. Um, it, some other way of doing that, but yeah, it got a little bit messed up as to what the actual crits were. So I just said, look, just pull three cards and yeah. flip them, and we'll go from there. At this stage, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it it would have to be an incredible series of shots to take out Saw. So it's most likely going to end 12 to 21 at this point, which... But not playing the objectives, I'm actually... I don't think I did too badly. I had fun, which was the main thing. Um, oh, but yeah. yeah. Capturing those objectives early for Ben. I mean, Recoil has had that objective for five turns. And that's a lot of points. I mean, it's effectively another beat wing. Yeah. And the same for Malaris as well. He's had that the whole game as well, so... Uh, yep. Oh, that's not a bad shot. Pretty good. Oh, That's yeah. a better evade. The first time Saw gets shot, he's just like, no, thank you. 
And now he's still got three dice because he's got an obstructed shot. And he's still got an evade and elusive as well. Oh yeah, just just in case you've still got elusive. Yeah, just in case. Uh, can he? Pre- he could have predated to reroll that. He could have. Not that. But it- I think. I think he saw. Obviously, I had elusive. I had the evade. It wasn't going to make any difference. Um. But yeah, that is. That well, is game. Well done, Ben. Obviously, capturing those objectives early really was key. And those are some really nice combos that he was able to pull off there with DT798, Gallic, Malarus, just... Some of the uh, best used of tracks we've seen in ages. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Really, really powerful. Um, just makes you, makes you think, actually, maybe I should try it again. It just worked really well. So, yeah, well done to Ben there. Um, I had a brilliant time. I love flying B-Wings. I need to fly them more often. Um, But, yeah, James, again, thank you very much for the little tweaks you did to my list there and uh, for coming along and watching it. I hope I did the Rebellion sort of proud. Just next time, get some objectives, you know? (laughs) Okay, I'll play the objectives. (laughs) Yeah, it was good fun. But yeah, thank you for coming along, James. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I did. Excellent. And guys, again, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget, like the video if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. And we will see you very soon for Season 4 of Flight Academy. We will see you next time. <laughs>